Out of Hero's Heart, this is Kyle Ferguson. Today, I'm sitting down with Mundane Zebras Blaze. This is from Storm Division. Can't censorship versus Million Dollar JPEG. Game four on Infernal Shrines. Mundane Zebra, thank you for joining me. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me. I, I didn't know we hadn't done a Blaze yet. It's such a huge prevalence in the NGS scene. I just assumed. So thank you for, for filling out our roster. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Blaze is definitely uh, one of the strongest heroes right now, so I'm surprised as well. How did that happen? What what changed, or did nothing change? We just figured it out. Um, I'm not sure. I took a bit of a break, and then Blaze was good again. So <laughs> fair enough. That's uh, kind of what happened for me. Fair enough. I mean, I guess we're out of the that insane prevalence of Dahaka, as he got a couple nerfs there. Uh, yeah. He got some talents turned around which made him a decent counter to hogger but i'm just seeing so much of him whether it's this sort of off in the lane bruiser type a main tank trading with a variant type or even like triple bruiser blaze just kind of plugs in everywhere yeah sure does um i don't know what i was gonna say there but uh like one of the things in this game that you'll see is that i'm playing blaze more as a, a camping hero almost because uh, our composition kind of needs that and we kind of have Falstad to do the offlane work for me So oh, he definitely is a very versatile hero So here on infernal shrines you first picked it for your team or you know in the third pick when you saw an enemy Malfurion alongside or the enemy Sylvanas with your Malfurion ha Yeah How did how did the blaze come about there? Was it just you were you wanted it infernal shrines? can't take ability or was there something already in mind versus sylvanas uh well blaze i thought they were going to first pick it because the way that the bands went uh junkrat being banned lucio is one of the biggest counters to blaze and hogger is other than blaze the probably the highest priority bruiser on shrines uh all those bands kind of made blaze an extremely strong pick so when they didn't first pick it, we just decided to pick it for ourselves because of how, like I already said, how versatile he is and how much he can do. And yeah, that's kind of why we went for that. The Lucio, is that just to boop away from bunkers? Uh, so Lucio can boop the E-charge that Blaze oh, has. Oh, okay. And then if you go the Unstoppable at one uh, for Blaze, which can cancel the fact that he can boop your charge, then he can just high five it and it and you know it still kind of counters you so, so the frequency yeah. of the unstoppable plus the boot means you try to counter it with another pick and then it ends up getting countered anyway yeah and then for camp taking i guess uh that is pretty early the incinerator gauntlets there that give you the bonus 50 percent to minions mercenaries and monsters yep and then when you uh combo that with the uh the attack speed and the move speed of the uh, level one that I picked uh, that we were, that you were looking at earlier. That just makes it so that you can clear waves, clear camps extremely quickly. Uh, and that's why most people are going with this build right now. So is that because, so did Tychus join you there in the top because you were kind of racing for the objective and now it hasn't gone online. So you guys kind of changed plan there or would Tychus have helped you out anyway? Blaze is not at the level he could solo the shaman. Um, well, I could sh solo the shamans, but we were pretty late doing that camp, so we decided to do it with more people. And then when we saw that we were still going to be late to objective, we just decided let's just cut our losses and try to get some value in a different lane. Um, and then when they four man rotated, we decided we would rotate to objective to try to get a pick on the Sylvanas that was alone. But as you can see there, that didn't work out. Yeah, lots of angles. Very busy, of course, being Storm, you know, uh, division play here. In a home environment with Storm League, would Blaze just kind of be the solo on the pit, everyone else do other things, you know, typing to everyone, go, 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 I can do this type? Uh, Yeah, I mean, you can definitely play like that. You can also play it as uh, the engage tank. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no specific way that you have to play Blaze. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. In that pit, do you feel like you're kind of a setup hero with 
you know, lining up your oils perfectly to create zones so no one can interfere with you? Or is it just, is it just fire, fire, fire as much as you can in the pit itself? Uh, yeah, I think lining up the oils, because the oil, you don't really want to waste it. If you are able to keep one stack, um, yeah, I get caught here. But if you're able to keep one stack of oil all the time, just so that you can set up your E better, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of what you want to go for. So you can use your, your oil on yourself, uh, sometimes, but you kind of want to keep one stack for when you're charging in. Oh, and then clog up them so they have let more of a chance to be hit by your charge. Yeah, because you can slow them and then, yeah, hit them with the stun. That makes sense. I mean, that's actually a great point. And then with the two charges, so at two charges as you are, are here, but you're rezzing, this one's kind of free, do what you want, or manage your own health. Second one, yeah. entirely for engage. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned the new habits there and probably, you know, a lot of prevalence against all sorts of heroes, Lucio, but then Garrosh's and that sort of note. Is there another pick other than Adrenaline stim pack, or are all these kind of undertuned in that regard? Um, some blazes like to go for the neural stim pack. Um, so on maps like uh, Battlefield of Eternity, or you know, maps where you don't need as much wave clear, um, then new habits or neural stim pack are generally a better pick because the CDR. Can do a lot for you you know getting more stuns out getting more oils out uh and all that stuff so yeah i think the only one that's really bad is the shield um but yeah just doesn't give as much value even with the sort of emergency maybe training wheels tied to it yeah i i think that you already have a save with the bunker um so since you can just save yourself using the bunker, you don't need the shield for anything extra. That's an interesting point. So has Blaze become automatically bunker these days, or is there ever a combustion game? Uh, if if you're playing seriously, it's bunker every time. Yeah. I guess combustion being interruptible would just lend right back into the Lucio problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe not the boop part, but more of a... Every, everyone in Storm Division is yeah. going to stun the combustion the second it starts. Yeah, or just walk out of it as well. <laughs> that, that too. That too. <laughs> Having your uh, movement speed reduced by 40% while channeling doesn't exactly allow a lot of room to call. If I were looking at this draft, like, just on paper, not knowing the order, I would have thought that Blaze was picked up after Chromie to be some sort of rewind counter. Uh, Yeah. That's definitely something that you can do. Um, but I think Blaze is such high priority right now that picking it late is almost impossible. Or generally, when you're holding your offlane pick for later, I, I vote that we look away from this part because uh, I get solo killed here. But um, <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when you kind of hold your offlaner, you're generally hoping for... Um, either a counter pick to the other offlaner or something that will substantially like help you or change your draft in some way so blaze generally isn't really a hero that can do that he's more of a hero that you can pick early and then you can say okay we can go in all these different directions after we pick this hero that makes perfect sense You've got the the trait with the pyromania, which is you know gives you the 40 armor, damage an area around you. Each hero hit by flame stream reduces pyromania's cooldown by four seconds. Where's your priority with flame stream? Is it big damage and you're going for those big hits with seven, or I guess in this case the spell power reduction, or are you more focused on lighting your own fires? How do you prior prioritize these spells, particularly when tied to flame stream? Um, I would say that when you are uh, laning in the early game, you would want to prioritize flame stream for wave clear or poking at the enemy wall. When you're uh, team fighting, you generally want to go for damage, or if you have the spell power, which I took, 
then it's a good idea to either use it on targets like the Diablo, who do a lot with their spell power, or something like the Chromie. So you kind of want to pick your target. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's just either you want to clear with it or you want to... Yeah. Oh, that's so if you take the level 7 there, you want to pick your target and you know, use that level 7 the best way possible. I didn't really think but... about the Diablo there because we, you know, spell power is healing as well. So get the healer, get the chromie. But I guess Diablo, particularly in the build he's doing with all the flame stomp talents... Yeah. Fire Stomp Towns, he's actually regenerating a lot of health based off spell power. Yeah, and when he does his ultimate, um, I forgot what the exact name was, but. Oh, Lightning Breath. When he does that ultimate, uh, it becomes really powerful because the biggest reason that W build is so strong is it gives you that spell power during mm. Lightning Breath, and it makes it do so much more damage. And when you're Blaze and you can just Q him, it kind of just nullifies that yeah uh, that's a that's a cool connection as the game's starting to develop here we haven't seen a lot of bunkers yet but i'm sure that's you know kind of being held by this by the reaction is there anything in particular outside of uh maybe uh, lightning breath that you're looking out for uh well definitely uh the loop as you were talking about uh using it as a loop uh how do you say it? Interrupter or canceller? One of those. Or another thing you can do is that if someone is isolated, you can put a bunker down and, you know, generally tell them the location of it and they can maybe go into it. Oh, um, isolated from Dhaka. Yes. Does that cleanse off the whole business? Um, I'm not sure, but I know you can get in the bunker while you're silenced, so... Oh. At least they're not gonna have to. Uh, they're not gonna have to deal with uh, being silenced and not being able to see anything. Wait, because your your vision is greatly reduced. But I guess you could see a bunker like standing next to you, and on comms you could be like, "Go left, go right." Yes, you could. That's exactly it. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that, that's coordinated. That's interesting. Yeah. Obviously, in Storm League, you're not going to be able to no. do that, but <laughs> no. if you're able to bunker near enough to them, uh, yeah, then, you know, it's you can still do it. Oh, wow. So, at level 13 here, you got the Collision Course, Jet Propulsion, Collision deals bonus damage to the first enemy hero hit. Any other options yep. at this level? Uh, right now, not really. Uh, this talent, Collision Course, is probably one of the most powerful talents in the game um i mean yeah it just i think it just you can see it for yourself just 536 damage on a stunning ability it's uh yeah that's a lot of damage yeah just raw damage compared to i guess the rest of these are control being yeah area well increase ignite spills damage i guess but yeah probably not the pop you're looking for in storm division yeah well oil spin oil spill slows when ignited it's just not really worth it because you could just not ignite your oil spill and then you're just getting that slow anyways and then the mm. increased ignited oil spill damage i mean it's just a completely it's it's like you're taking collision course but you're doing less damage and over a longer period of time. So it just doesn't make sense to take that over collisions, of course. Right, more counterable damage. Uh, yeah. I guess even, too, you have a, a more sustainy healer like Brightwing, so why bother trying to overwhelm her? Yeah. Here you got the Juggernaut Plating, which gives activate gain 50 spell armor. I'm actually curious to kind of see how you recover this fight, but actually everyone's okay except for Stitches, so there really was no reason to make a big engage there as, yeah as stitches um, goes down do you take on the tank role or does the whole team just kind of say we don't have main tank blaze go clear lanes we're not gonna bother uh yeah i kind of take on the main tank role mostly because as i said earlier we have the false stat so false stat's going to be doing uh a lot of the off lane work um but at this point we're not really looking to fight so we're just looking to you know fix our lanes kind of try to catch up a little bit of the xp we lost 
Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest reason for that engage that went wrong was just miscommunication. So, you know, it happens. And we're seeing those adrenaline stim packs used pretty regularly. I mean, these aren't really like a team fight specific thing just to get that attack no. speed out with your level four and clear lane faster, join the team fights faster. Yep. So at level 16, we we're talking about there, the Juggernaut plating 50 spell armor for three seconds upon expiration, gain a shield to go to 125% of the spell damage taken while Juggernaut planing is active. Main pick or reaction to Chromie and the like? Um, I think there's two best possibilities in this, uh, in this talent tier, and that's Thermal Protection and Juggernaut Plating. Juggernaut Plating has been my main pick generally these days, just because I kind of realized that the shield is permanent. Oh. Um, yeah, so when you block any damage and it becomes a shield, you just have that shield for, you know, until you lose it. Um, so yeah, I've been taking a liking to it. That's an interesting idea. So you could even sort of get embroiled in a poke scenario, take some damage and just have that for the next fight on a 30 second cooldown. Yeah. I could see the reduced damage on Diablo there. The rest of your team was fine. Poor Stitches though, did not <laughs> did not have a chance. Yeah, we uh we didn't understand how he died that quickly there, but uh when you look at a uh, Chromie's level 14 talent, it becomes a bit yeah, she can do a lot of damage. So she was just full pump dump on overdrive. It's not like he had any armor reductions either that I can... Oh, wait, no. Nope. No, we have Critterize. Oh, okay. Critterize, yep. Critterize might have done it there. Okay, okay. So, I mean, this is a, this looks a little dire for the team right now, at least when we're looking at anything but bottom lane. The, you're all pushed out. It just keeps going down. So what's kind of comms like, and how are you playing into the changing team atmosphere? Um, well, we knew that we would probably get behind early just because we picked the Stitches. Um, and Stitches, he's the kind of hero that until level 10, until level 13, he has a really hard time uh, dealing with, you know, just being a main tank in general. Uh, <laughs> I guess he doesn't bring a lot of CC to the team, right? Um, so we knew that we'd probably get pushed back in the early game and... We knew that if we could just hold on well enough, we would be able to eventually get a team fight uh, that would, you know, well, not even a team fight, but just picks that would go in our favor. So in the comms right now, we're kind of just calm. You know, we know that this is what's supposed to happen. We're still sticking to the game plan of, you know, uh, get to late game, which we have done now and just look for you know, advantageous fights at that point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just being calm and focusing on just winning the game. Level 20, you got the burn notice. Basic attack slows enemies by 5% and deal an additional 41 damage over 2.5 seconds, stacking up to five times. Yep. Why this one? Um, I think the biggest reason for this one is just uh, I'm the biggest Brian clear for my team, and I think that it helps me do Shrine a little bit. And it also synergizes extremely well with the level 1 and 4 that I took. So generally, when I take this level 1 and 4, I like to go for the burn notice just because it creates extra pressure on, uh, on the targets that I'm hitting and on the front line. Because the slow, I mean, you know, it, it gets annoying when you're a tank. Sure. And uh, is Fortified Bunker actually bringing enough to the table to warrant, you know, breaking your auto attack build? Yeah, oil uh, spells, but... I, I would say that sometimes it is, but it's not actually because of the oil spills. It's because of the, the bonus armor and the extra duration that you get from that. That's the biggest reason I would take uh, Fortified Bunker over Burn Notice. So is that kind of a... a a design problem that you feel like could be short up a little on blaze like the there's this there's all these abilities tied to bunker that are about hanging out in it when storm league and tournament players don't hang out in it uh yeah i mean maybe i think 
Blaze doesn't need any extra help right now, so <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe not the right place for for buffs and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, I think Blaze is doing uh, perfectly fine. So I uh, even maybe he could take a couple nerfs, but um, yeah, I mean it's it's true that there's a couple talents that you want to maybe stay in bunker when that's not really the point. The point of bunker is to get yourself out of a potentially dangerous situation and then you just want to get out of it and get back in the fight as fast as you can really did your bunker body block the the area there or is it pretty easy to get around for the enemy team no it does body block the okay. area uh, yeah so you actually so in that situation you created a wall and then chromie got pulled back <laughs> over the wall that you had created dividing her further from the team yeah that was a, a great hook by my tank player, and it definitely won us that fight. Um, and this was uh, definitely the turning point in this game. Yeah, you all get yeah, that. Yeah, I think in this uh, situation here, my only play was to... Well, not my only play, but the best play for me, in my opinion, was to stay there and just make sure that my team got the shrine. And if we get the shrine, we have a very good chance of winning the game, and the fact that I'm dead doesn't actually matter that much so does your burn notice do dealing in it appears to do damage to buildings so i guess you burn the buildings too uh yeah it does damage oh, to everything that's interesting but yeah with yeah. the with the punisher in tow an arcane punisher no less here at the 21 minute mark i mean it's looking like a pretty good push for y'all yeah um we also have uh the odin which is uh, one of the strongest level 20s in the entire game and we had uh, the gust coming It's not up yet, but it was coming up and we have hungry hungry stitches So we knew that if we just hit the core get it low enough We can just take all the other Heroes off of the map and just end the game. So we knew that this would probably be the end of the game and uh, Yeah, that's why I made sure that uh, My team secured that shrine and I didn't mind dying for it so you're almost able to take something like Stitches in this situation because Blaze has so much lane clear and utility. And taking Blaze in that early pick could also mean you don't do that build at all. So early pick Blaze. Yep. Oh, perfect. That, that, <laughs> that's that's simple advice for anyone to follow. Yep. Uh, would you recommend this build to someone just starting out on Blaze? Is this the build? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I think that if you're playing Blaze and you're looking at the macro perspective of what Blaze can provide to his team, this is the best way. This build is the best way to maximize that. Um, and the biggest two talents for that are obviously level one and four, um, which are interchangeable. Um, but if you are trying to do the best wave clear, the best camp clear, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those two talents will bring you a lot as Blaze. And then you mentioned you know, that suppressing fire being used on the tank there. So it seems like that's the go-to there all the time too, if that's the case. Uh, I think suppressive fire and nanomachine coating are uh, interchangeable. Okay. Uh, Okay, it really spell, depends. Yeah. yeah, it really depends because I thought nanomachine coating, it wasn't um, consistent this game. Uh, the Haka can burrow out of it. Uh, it doesn't really do anything to Chromie. Uh, Sylvanas will have her unstoppable to, you know, not be affected by it, uh, or just you know generally leave that area. Um, so I, I felt like the, sup the suppressive fire, the spell power on the Diablo, on the Brightway, on the Chromie was just more value this game. And that's why I went for it. Awesome. Well, sounds like a great time to pick Blaze for everybody. And thank you for watching here. Be sure to like, subscribe here at Heroes Hearth for more Learn to Play Heroes Storm videos coming up soon.